Count of three. Let's give your loudest roar. Your count of three. One, two, three. Yeah! Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Love it. You guys are beautiful this morning. I get the privilege to do announcements today. We have a lot going on. Randy, I, I, what, you, what you gave was so timely and so good. Do you understand what it means to make a deposit? When you make a deposit into a bank account, you, you have to make that deposit in order to get something in return. You know, my boys used to think, my boys used to think they would, they would say, when we were low on money, they would say, well, Dad, just take that card and put it in that machine. Not realizing that I had to put money in the bank in order for that card to even work. You have to make deposits. We're coming up on water immersion Sunday, Sunday evening, our water immersion. We're going to do a three-day fast before the water immersion, so you figure three days before Sunday, whatever that looks like to you. But I believe that we have to make a deposit for some things to happen. We have to make that deposit in fasting for some things to happen, for us to bring out some things that we want to see. Because Jesus says some things don't come but by prayer and fasting. So we must do those things. We must learn how to deposit in order to get out. And so I'm grateful this morning that that we get to do that. I mean, this is not a burden. This shouldn't be a burden to fast. It should be a joyous thing to go, you know what? I'm giving something up for the one who gave everything up. That's what it should be, a joyous time. So I'm grateful that that we're going to be able to fast for the water immersion. We've got some spectacular people coming, and we got people coming that have some spectacular needs some things that, that God is going to move in their lives in the moment they make contact with the water. And so I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting greater things this week. So you guys press in. Whatever the fasting looks like to you, whatever it looks like to you, ask the Lord what it looks like for you to fast. You might be a, you might be a chocoholic and... and, and, and eat chocolate like it's going out of style and and you just can't give it up. Maybe the Lord will say to you, you know, just for three days don't touch chocolate. And then you'll find out how much better you feel, how much weight you've lost. You might enjoy fasting. So if you're a chocoholic, he might call you on a fast. If you're a Facebookaholic, he might call you to fast your Facebook. I believe that he's referring to fasting food when he talks about it, but but we can fast all kinds of things. It's giving something up that we desire to have in order to receive the benefits from what God has for us to receive. And so I'm grateful for that this morning. Um, In the way of announcements, you know, we have a um, team that uh, greets people outside. And um, so if, if you would like to be a part of that team, listen, um, this, this guy right here, he's a real tall guy right here. You can't miss him. He's got the biggest beard in the house. You can't miss him. He needs some help. Come earlier and greet people. Help them. Park their cars. Do whatever we got to do. And um, but Nate, can you raise your hand? So see if you stand up, he'll touch the ceiling. But yeah, help Nate. He's got a vest for you to wear if you like to wear a vest. It's a colorful vest. And, and uh, just help get people parked. You know, sometimes these, park, these parking lot out here is kind of tight parking and we don't want any door banging going on so um, that's why I park in back and so help him come and help if you guys haven't um, if you haven't if you're new today and you haven't um, know anything about our app list we do everything through the app like we're trying to do everything through the app it costs us money to get this app going and we're trying to do everything so we can communicate and connect with you through the app so if something's going on something's happening it's through the app. So if you got your phone, um, grab a hold of this. It's pretty easy. If you need, need help, Faye is in the back. She'll help you afterwards or someone else will help you. We've got to get this, our phones downloaded with this app because it's, it's where we are going to connect 
that's going to be our main connection point. And, and you might, you know, I'm hoping that people connect tonight because we, last week we talked about the water immersion this week, and it's not this week, it's next week. So um, I'm hoping that people grab a hold of it and they watch our Facebook and they watch all the stuff that Shelly posts so we can actually get that corrected so we don't have people showing up. So um, I might be here at 6 o'clock tonight just in case someone shows up and uh, throw some water on them, tell them to come back next week. But we've got a lot of things going on. So we got some women's meetings coming up, some women's conferences coming up. I know Faye last year, man, she just put together an awesome, awesome, awesome women's conference. So her, um, that, that women's conference for Life of Love is coming up September 29th and 30th. Um, so get registered for that. Get with Faye if you need help with that. Get registered with women. It's going to be powerful. There's going to be powerhouse speakers at that conference. I and mean, you do not want to miss it. Last year, if you missed it, you missed a great thing. It was a packed house. And uh, God really, really moved. So get re- pre-registered for that conference. Also, um, our own, uh, Cherie Wilson is having their, their women's conference. You know, this is a thing. We don't mind advertising what other people are doing because it's powerful. Our goal is to get you equipped with the things that God has for you. And women, so these are, you can, you can hit both of these and grab something out of both of these conferences. So Friday the 29th, I believe, and, and 30th, this coming, the 29th of this month, is Cherise? Oh, March, March 5th. August 5th, sorry, August 5th. Read that, whatever that says, August 5th. I'm too close to it. Um, that's right, August 5th. So um, go enjoy that. It's going to be an amazing, going to be an amazing time. So, uh, yeah. Also, Caneo. we got two more weeks left to sign up for Caneo. Um, it's a powerful, powerful tool to learn the in-depth Word of God. Um, not just the surface reading that some of us some of us do. We just read the surface of it, and we just go over the surface. And we there's so much more that God has for you. So much more. I mean, you could take every single verse and grab something out of it and apply it to your life. So, Kaneo is a way to um, approach that and and grab a hold of a great great thing. So, if you need help with that, connect with Pastor Shelley or Faye. And um, Faye Anderson, she's in the back usually. And um, so if you have any questions with that, grab a hold of her. I am grateful to be here today. I'm glad you guys are here too. Um, just got back from just got back from a weekend. I just to let you guys know I, I've got um, I got to hang with some of my grandkids this weekend. It was quite an experience. Um, I'm 52 years old, and I just found out last week that I have number 12 on the way. <laughs> number 12 grandkids, so that's a lot of grandkids. So are we releasing the kids out? All right, kids, you know what to do. See you. Have fun. Bless you. Jesus loves you. I thought somebody else was supposed to do that. Pray blessings over all of you. Enjoy. 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 Learn. Listen, sit still, pay attention. How many of you have more than 12 grandkids? That's a bunch. They said, you can come and get them all at once. I'm like, yeah, probably not going to happen. We might try it once, but that's probably going to be it. We'll probably be, we get wore out with just two of them. And yesterday, actually, we got wore out. We didn't get home till late, and we just observed and watched them have fun, and that wore us out. So uh, imagine having all of them and at one time, but, but we did have a good time, and uh, we did have a good time with all of them. You guys know that God cares about you. He loves you so much. He cares so much about you. He cares about every little part of your life, everything that you're going through, everything you're dealing with. God cares about you. As long as he allows our world to stand, to stay in existence, he will always be working to reconcile men and women. He will always be working to reconcile you and I because he has a calling for us. He has a spiritual calling for every one of us to step into. We're tools. 
that God wants to use in other people's lives. He wants us to be ready in every aspect of our life to be able to reach out and touch a lost and dying world. That's what God has for you and I. That's just the stirring of the water, getting ready for this weekend. We might see things, listen, from a limited point of view. Like this thing on the back, what does this look like to you? You can say it out loud. What is it? Like a purple square. And this is how we see things. This is how you and I, this is how we see things. Like we're so close into things. But what happens if you like get back where God is? You get to where the point that God is and you step back and you look at it outside and see from a different perspective. That's what that was. But we're so close to it. We're so close to things. We don't see things how God sees things, but he sees the big picture in everything. He sees the big picture in everything in our lives. And it's important to know that Scripture is clear how much he cares for you and I, how much he loves you and I, how much he wants to have relationship with you and I. How much he wants to fellowship with you and I. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 7. I want you to know that God answers our prayer this morning. Matthew 7, starting with 7, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. Or what man is there among you who, will, when his son asks for a loaf, you give him a stone? You ever did that to your kids? No. What about if they ask you for a piece of fish, did you give them a snake? No. You didn't. And the Bible says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? It's important to know he wants to answer your prayers. He wants to answer everything that you have from him, everything that you ask of him. He wants to answer your prayers. In Philippians 4, 4 through 7, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. How many of you get anxious? Stuff's getting ready to happen. You're like, things are coming up. Bills are coming. Things are happening. Money's like low in the bank. And you get anxious. He says, be anxious for nothing. This is him telling you how much he cares for you. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And this is what happens. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guide your hearts, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. So when you put off the anxious feelings inside of you about what's getting ready to happen, what happens? He brings peace in that place. That everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be good. He also wants you to ask when you ask without doubting. How many of you have ever asked for something and then doubted while you're asking that you're going to get it? I have so many times. I have so many times. You pray for healing, and then you doubt it while you're praying for it. God, will you touch this person? And then your mind's like, it's not going to happen. 
That's why we have to be centered up with him. That's why we have to know that we know that we know who we are and whose we are. That's why we have to be prayed up and stayed up. That's why we have to build this bank. Randy was talking about this, this bank that you deposit into knowing that God is going to answer those prayers without a doubt, without a doubt. And James 1, 6 says this, But he must ask in faith without doubting, for the one who doubts is like a surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the winds, coming in and out, in and out, up and down, up and down. And God wants our faith to be sturdy and stable across the board, knowing that he knows best in every situation, and he's right always. You can't lean on your own thinking. You do when you're inside and looking at this thing close up. But when you look at the big picture like God does, you don't look at it that way. There's no doubt in me because you see the big picture. And God wants to show us the big picture and everything. And in knowing what the Word says, that He loves you and He cares for you, is part of that big picture. That's part of the big picture, knowing that He cares about you and everything that you're going through. If you lose a set of keys, he wants you to be able to find that set of keys, and he wants to show you. Shelly's all the time, she'll, she'll be around the house, and she'll just uh, missing something. She's like, Lord, show me. Show me where it's at. Show me. Next thing you know, he says, go look in this cabinet. Bam, it's right there. Then she remembers she left it there. Trusting God that way, knowing who we are, trusting him that way. And John 5, 14, 15 says this. This is the confidence which we have before him that if we ask according to his will, listen, according to his will, he hears us. If we ask according to his will, he hears us. He knows, listen, he knows what you need before you even ask. He knows what you need. He instructs us to ask in confidence. Always be confident when you're asking for something from God. Always be confident. You're confident when you go to the bank and you, and you ask the teller to give you $100 out of the bank because you know you have that $100 in there. Because otherwise you wouldn't go to the bank and go, I need $100. And they say, well, sir, you only have $5 in the bank. I know, but I need $100. In faith, you might try that. It's probably not going to get you where unless the person behind the counter is like, well, I'll give you the other 90. I'll front you the other 95. But listen. You're going to go to the bank and ask for things out because you've deposited in. And you're confident in that. So why can't you be confident in the things of God when you deposit those prayers? When you're up early in the morning, I think I was up at 2 o'clock this morning. When you're up early in the morning and you're, and you're asking God and you're petitioning to God and you're saying, Lord, I need you. I, I need you. I need your strength today. Give me the words to say, Lord. Tell me what's on your heart. And I don't do that when I pray that way. I don't do that doubting, thinking I'm not going to have anything to say. But I do that knowing that he's going to give me something to say. If you guys knew how I built my message, it would blow your mind. I thought I had a message yesterday. And I got to rethink it because I'm going into this situation. I'm going into this fun park. And it's not fun for me anymore to be at a, at a place like that because I overanalyze everything. I like overanalyze everything. And, I, and, I, and, I'm, and, I, and I'm in this place and I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, well, if you come into this with the right attitude, you're going to get the right thing out of it. You come in this all bubbly and joyous, hey, yeah, 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 and then you're going you're gonna to enjoy it. Well, um, I really didn't go into it all bubbly. You know, I just got some information uh, about my friend Kevin's brother passing away, and, and that, was, that, was, that was heavy on me. Um, and uh, we're going to pray for Kevin here in a little bit. But um, his brother, 27 years old, uh, passed away suddenly. 
And so, so that was weighing on me. There's just, you know, there's a lot of things going on in life just weighing on me. So I go into it, you know, knowing I'm going to be able to hang with my grandkids, but yet I'm not. And they, they, they even noticed it, you know, that I wasn't who I normally am. But I'm confident knowing that he always has my back, that he always has something for me. And I, and I, and I was thinking that's what the message is going to be about. Then all of a sudden I thought, I'm going to insert too much of Jason in that message and not enough of him. Because when I walked in the park, I saw they had this Santa Claus thing over here, and then they have this, the witch over here. And I'm thinking, what is this place? You got your little, you got your little scene right here that's got Jesus in the, in, in the baby Jesus in, in the manger scene. And then you walk into a hollow, scary, demonic thing. I'm just being real with you. This is how I perceived it all. So then right away, I'm like, I'm negative on the whole thing. Right away, coming into the whole thing. And, and, it was, and I have a different perspective now than I had the last time I went to it, probably 12, 14 years ago. I have a different perspective now than I did then because I've grown. I've grown into him. And then I'm sitting there and I'm thinking... Where is this at in the Word of God? Where is this at in the Word of God? Any of this. I know we're supposed to go in the world and we're supposed to be a light in the world. I know that. But where is this kind of thing at in the Word? Because I can't find it. And I want to be faithful to the Word of God. I want to be faithful to do what the Word of God says. And I know it's okay to have fun. I know it's okay to do things. I, I, I'm not saying that we can't do things in life and have fun. But I'm saying is the, the older I get in Christ, the more I start narrowing things down of what I'm, I'm able to do and not able to do. And it might be okay for you now. And you might get to 52 years old and go, you know what, man, I wish I would have gave that up years ago. But here I am, I'm learning these things now, and God's showing me these things. He's like, you know, to be truthful, I'll probably never go back again. Even if the kids want to go, I'll probably not go back again, just because the way it made me feel. It felt dirty, it felt unholy, it felt, there was no enjoyment for me. Maybe for you, and I'm not saying you can't go to this place, but I'm just saying for me, it was different. But I have confidence because I know that he is in me. I know that he is my keeper. I know that he's the one that loves me. God provides. I want you to know God provides hidden things that we don't even ask for. I mean, how many things, think about how many things have God provided for you that you haven't even asked for? You don't even have to pray and you get these things. What a good God. What a good God. There's things you don't even have to pray for, and he gives it to you anyhow. I love that. So how strong is your prayer life this morning? How strong are the things that you pray for? The things that you're asking God for, the things that you want out of life, the things that you feel like you need to have out of life, because he loves you, and he wants to give you those things. He wants to have that relationship and that fellowship. Because he loves you. Ephesians 3.20 says this. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. God is able to do beyond all we ask or think. Look, I mean, just look back at your life. Think of how God answered some of your prayers. Look back at your life and think of something that God answered a, a prayer that you didn't, or answered something you didn't ask for. Like he gave you something you didn't ask for. I tell you what, um, eight years ago, I didn't know I was going to have 12 grandkids. Listen, they're all eight and under. This is getting real. I didn't know I was going to have 12 grandkids. But here we go. I really didn't even ask for 12 grandkids. Some of you have like a couple and you get there like really, really enjoy them. When you have 12, it's a little different. It's like, 
you love them and you want that time with them, but it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, um, I think when Shelly hit the pillow last night, I think, um, I think she actually slept here and then fell down to the pillow. That's, that's how, that's how exhausting it was. Um, I'm grateful for them. I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful that God gave us them to us, but, um, that's something I didn't ask for, but yet God gave it to me. So I know he has a plan. He has a purpose, you know. He has a purpose for us. Can you testify of God working in your life? Can you testify of something that he's done in your life without asking? I know you can. I know all of you can. I know all of you can testify. He blesses us beyond all of our expectations. You know that God provides material things as well. You ever been given something by God, like a material thing? He's given me all kind of stuff. Matthew 6, 25 through 34 says this. And I'm just giving you the scripture we're laying out this morning. For this reason I say unto you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink. This is talking about someone who is in relationship with Jesus, someone who has fellowship with Jesus. We don't have to worry about these things. The world worries about these things. They struggle. How am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to make this happen? How's this going to work? But we don't have to do that. Things might get tight and they might get tough at times, but because of our confidence, we step forward, we keep moving forward to Him because of our confidence. As to what you will eat or drink, or your, nor for your body, as to what you will put on it, is not life more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap nor gather in the barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than the birds of the air? And I love the birds of the air. I love watching them. I love watching the freedom that they have. Just fly and soar. And it says, and who of you being worried can add one single hour to your life? I mean, if you worry about things, that's not going to add. That's really, I mean, <laughs> I used to have hair when we started this ministry. No, I did not. But my hair wasn't as gray. I didn't have to use some of those dyes as how, how I have to use them now when I started the ministry yeah, this is good stuff. So if I worried about stuff, and I did in the beginning, I, worried, I did worry about things. I thought, how's this going to happen? How's this going to happen? How are we going to pay this bill? How are we going to pay that bill? You know, I think people today think that, um, you know, because tithing is not necessarily a requirement in the New Testament, but it is in the Old Testament, and there's a benefit from giving. Um, in the New Testament, it's just it talks about the benefits and, and the beneficial factors of being able to give to the house of the Lord. I think some people think that the bills just get paid. Some people come to church and they think, you know what? It's just going to happen. It's just all going to get paid. And go try to draw that $100 out of your bank when you only have five in it and see what happens. That's about how the bills will get paid. But because of you guys faithfully giving, that's how the bills get paid. That's how the bills get paid. Thank you for giving. Thank you for what you do, how you pour into this house. I appreciate it. That takes a load off of Shelly and I where we don't have to worry about things. God said, I'll pay for this thing. I'll pay for this thing. And that's what we said. Lord, if you want us to do this, you pay for it. He said, I'll pay for it. So he's paying for it. And we're grateful that he is paying for it. So worrying is not going to add one hour to your life. It's just going to give you gray hair. Why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. Solomon was a pretty good dude. Full of wisdom. Had a lot of money. 
had a lot of things that says that he wasn't even closed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Cody used to worry about things. Not so much anymore. God's moved in his life in such a way. I mean, he's going to get up here in one of our life talks and, and him and his wife and testify a little bit about what God's done in their life. It's just been amazing. The transition's been amazing. I'm grateful. I get to watch that. I get to watch that transformation. It's so good. Our physical needs will be met. God always sustains his people. Just remember that. God will always sustain you. No matter what is going on in your life, God will always sustain you. He will always make a way. He will always bring a provision. Because he's a good God. Because he's a good God. So don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself because there's enough stuff going on today that we have to deal with. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. So to put that in perspective, the streets of heaven are made out of gold. And if God's going to supply all of our needs with all the riches of heaven, and the, the, the least in heaven is gold streets, can you imagine what the greatest thing in heaven is that we have access to? Like all the great things that we have access to, we don't even know. Our minds can't even comprehend. It would be, it would be mind-blowing to understand all that he has for us and the way that he answers our prayers and the way that he wants to come into our lives. He wants us to depend on him. It's so important to remember that material things should never become our primary goal in life. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth. Set your mind on things of above, not on things of the earth. Listen, we can have a good time. We can do things. We can have stuff. But make it priority to have him first. Matthew 16, 24 through 26 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must first deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or what will it gain a man to give in exchange for his soul? You understand what that means? What does it gain to profit a man? Or what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? Remember the enemy tried to tell Jesus, I'll give you all this. But it wouldn't have profited me anything. It would have took him from the purpose that God had for him. It would have shifted everything. We must never forget the blessings and prosperity. Do not always mean, listen. Our blessings and prosperity don't always mean that it is an endorsement from God. Just because you are blessed, just because you have things, just because you are, have money in the bank or whatever, doesn't mean that it's endorsed by God. Because the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. It rains on both parties, the just and the unjust. So... You might have money, they might have money. It doesn't, none of that matters. Your things, your stuff, none of that matters. What matters is you being centered up with him, knowing what I'm talking about today. He cares for you. He loves you. He wants relationship with you. He wants fellowship with you. That's our God. Don't seek after the world or the things of the world. 
When you go in the world, go into the world for the purpose to reach someone. Randy, when I was there at, at Holiday World, I was thinking, Lord, there's so many people here. I, 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 want, I want to minister to somebody. And my wife's over there. Shelly's like this super mom, like a super mom. Like if I would have let her yesterday, she would have been, she would have been sleeping on the way home. But I said, let's just sit back and watch what's going on. So that's what we're doing. And then someone else is taking a picture with Santa Claus. And her, she's got her baby sitting out here in this, in this carriage. And um, Shelly sees, and our kids are like way over here. Shelly sees the sun baking down on this, this little kid. And so she goes over and she moves the thing of the stroller over top of the kid. That's how much of a mom she is. And the kid pulls it back and looks at her and is like, what are you doing? I said, Shelly, you can't be a mom to everybody's kid. <laughs> Leave the boy alone. If he's going to burn, it's on his mom, not on you. We don't have to be that to everybody. And as I was pondering, I was like, Lord, what is my purpose? And he said, your purpose is to rest. I want you to rest. Because I could have, in, in, my, in me, I could have just like jumped up and said, started ministering to everybody. I mean, they were walking by. I was like, man, that's a good. And, but the thing about this with me, I see things in the spiritual realm. So I see like all their stuff. That's how God shows me people. I see their stuff, um, good and bad. And so when I'm, when I'm seeing this, it's kind of wearing me out that I'm seeing all this stuff and I'm not able to minister to these people. And God said, this is not your lane. I've got other people that I use as tools. That's where your lane comes into play. That's where it's your job to do what God says for you to do. Because it's not your job to minister to every person that walks by you. It's not. You'll get sidetracked. You'll get off. You, you, will, you will lose out. You will lose more than you'll gain. Those moments that God says, go and minister, you go there and minister. Go there and minister. You go there and minister. Don't get sidetracked with everything that's going on because you'll lose out on the main thing that God has for you if you get sidetracked with everything else that's going on. Because I tell you what, it would have been a, it would have been a heyday fest to minister. It would have. When we went to that movie the other day, I stood up in, in the movie and um, I just stood up. The Lord said, pray for everybody and just pray. And I just stood up in the middle of the movie theater. I said, can we just all pray? Can we just all pray? That was God saying, do this. If I would have did it out of his will, it wouldn't have went like it went. But I, it was in his will. He said, I need you to tell the people to pray. So we all stood up and we all prayed together. Being in his will and out of his will is two different things. But when you're centered up and knowing who you are, knowing that he is faithful, that he loves you, he provides for you, he wants all these things from you. He wants to equip you spiritually. I got a little bit more time. He wants to equip you spiritually. And with that spiritual mind, he wants you to know when it's time to minister and when it's time to shut it down. The other day, Wednesday, last Wednesday, Wednesday before I, I, was, I went to a visitation, Brother Donnie's um, brother had passed away. And I, I was going to get um, my bride something to eat. I went through the drive through and I saw this guy was broken down, and Randy talked about missing it. I don't know if I did or not. I'm still asking the Lord about it, but... Um, you guys can be the judge. I, I don't know. I mean, so this guy's broken down, and, and, I, and I rolled my window down and said, you need a jump. He's like, yeah, I need a jump. But there was a stipulation to the jump. I need you to sit here for about 20 minutes because my, my old name is gone, and I need you to charge my battery all the way up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm probably not going to sit here for 20 minutes. I'm heading to church on a Wednesday night. But, you know, um, what would have happened if I would have? I would have got here late, but. If that's what God had for me, I should have stayed. I should have spent the 20 minutes to give the guy a jump and run, charge his battery up so he could get, I don't know how far it would have got him at night with the lights on, but because um, he lived like 30 minutes away. So I probably should have just offered him a ride <laughs> and it probably would have been quicker. 
Sometimes we're going to miss it. But the more that we hit it and the more that we know what he wants us to do, the more we'll realize that and it'll register with us that, wow, this was the voice of God. This was God saying, do this. And you'll start noticing when you hit it and when it's right and when you miss it. And you'll start noticing the ones that you thought were a miss were really not a miss because God did have you going in another direction. You just have to learn how to discern those things. That's how much he cares for you. Learn how to discern his voice from the enemy's voice. Because if you don't think the enemy speaks, he does. He'll speak to you and he'll say, yeah, go ahead and sit here for 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes. And then if you do that and it's not the will of God, you miss out on what he had for you over here. It's going to be up to you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. To know what God has for you. To know what he wants for you. How he wants you to encounter the people he's brought before you. He wants to equip you spiritually. And provide for you. Do you know that God provides for you a way out always? The temptation. He always provides a way out. It says in 1 Corinthians. It says no temptation 10, 13. No temptation is overtake you, but such is common to man. And God is faithful, who will always allow you to, always allow you to be not, who will not always allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation will provide a way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. I mean, we're talking about how much God cares for you. So he's provided all that you need. He provides all the clothing that you need, all the food that you need. When you're serving him, he provides all these. He provides a way out. When the enemy tries to tempt you so strong, he provides a way out that you can walk away from it. You don't have to give in to it. He provides a way of understanding, a way of knowledge, a way of knowing him in a deeper, deeper way. He provides so much for us. That's how much he loves you. He cares for you. Some of you think that God don't care about your situation. Kevin, God cares about your situation. He cares about your heart right now. I know your heart is broke, broke, broke. Your younger brother died. I know your heart is broke, but God cares about you in this situation. And he loves you so much, and he loved your brother so much. We'll never be able to explain or understand until we get there, and then it won't even matter. But what we do know is he loves us. What we do know is he cares about us. You know that. We weren't designed to die. It's not in our DNA. It makes it tough. So we're adjusting to those things, learning to get past those things, knowing that one day we're going to be there too. And God is saying he needs us to be ripe and ready, a bride without spot or wrinkle, that we can enter into the joy of the Lord. And he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what he wants from us, so what he desires from us. Humble yourselves in the mighty hand of God that he will exalt you in the proper time. I'm going to close with this story. In 1 Kings chapter 17, this is really good. You guys, I have to read all of this. I mean, like when you go home, read this story. It's super good. There's so much more to it. There's so much before this story, before this story happened about Jezebel and, and Ahab and all the bad things that they did. This is in Kings chapter 17, verse 2. It says, And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Elijah, Go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook which is east of the Jordan. It shall, it shall be to you, sorry, it shall be that you will drink of the brook, and I have commanded you the ravens to provide for you there. Listen, we're talking about a New Testament stuff that God loves us and cares for us, but here's something in the Old Testament that tells you that God cared for them as well. Think of it. He's provided a raven to come and bring Food 
to this man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine just like being there without food and you serve God and you love him with everything in you and you're broken down on the side of the road and you're like, man, there's no food, nothing's happening. And all of a sudden a guy drops by with a bag of donuts and says, here. And then goes on, you really probably should have got a ride with him. But he provided food for you. God will provide. I've watched so many times how he's provided for me. When I was down and out and didn't have anything, and next thing you know, someone comes up with a potluck stew or something and says, here, take this. Has anybody ever experienced that? Like been down and out and someone come by and, and, and met your need? This is what happened. He come by and, and, and he said that the raven provided for you there. So he went according to the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. For he went and lived by the brook, which is east of Jordan. And the raven brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he would drink from the brook. That's how much God loves you. If you were in this situation, he would bring a raven to bring you food. And it happened after a while, the brook had dried up because there was no more rain in the land. And you have to read the pre-story to this. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and say, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So now he goes to a different situation. A raven was providing for him. And now he says, go to this certain land. And he said, I'm going to provide a widow that's going to, that's going to bring you some stuff, bring you from food. So he goes to, where, goes to where he was supposed to go, and he says, And he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Please get me a little water in a jar that I may drink. They didn't know each other at this point. He just asked this woman to give him something to drink. He said, Go and get me. Um, and he said, see. And she said, going to get it, he called her and said, please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. So as she was going, he said this, as she was going to get it, he called her and says, please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord, your God lives, I have no bread. Only a handful of flour in a bowl and a little oil in a jar. And behold, I am gathering a few sticks that I may go in and prepare for me and my son that we may eat and die. So she's already like at the end of her faith, possibly. And she's getting ready to go make the last little bit of stuff they had. And she scrapes the bottom of the barrel and gets a little bit of stuff up and gets the oil. But this is what he said. And I'm playing with my bifocals here, so that's what's, I'm trying to get my head situated just right to read this. For thus saith the Lord, the bowl of flour shall be exalted. Okay, let's go before that. Then Elijah said to her, do not fear, go as you have said, but make me of cake first. How many of you would do that? If you're like at the end of your like meal and you're getting ready to serve with your son, and you're getting ready to die, you think, how many of you would like give your last morsel to someone else? I mean, would you do it? We probably would. We probably would. I mean, if we have our baby laying there, we're like, uh, well, probably not going to. I mean, I, I'm, I love God with everything in me. I'm not even sure that I would be able to do it. Um, I would want to. I'd want to think if that situation ever comes, that I would be able to give my last morsel of food to that person first. Um, and he said, the bowl of flour shall not be exhausted if she does this. The bowl of flour will not be exhausted, nor the jar of oil be empty until the day of the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. So she went and did according to the word of Elijah. So she did what he said to do. And she and her, listen, and she and he and her household ate for many days. Why? Because she was faithful to do that one thing. She was faithful to be that, that usable vessel. She was faithful to be that usable tool 
in that time and give up everything to give all she had to this man. So he could eat and they could do without. But because she gave, she it provided for all of them until the rain came. So that morsel that she dug out of the bottom turned into a, a plenteous thing for all of them to have food. You see how much he cares for you? We think that we see that little, can I see that little picture again? We see that little, we see that small spectrum of how we view things. That's how we view things. I'm going to die. I'm not going to have enough. I'm going to die. If I give to you, we're going to die right now. But she chose to be that tool, usable tool for God. Listen, if you're supposed to be a sharpening tool, don't become a knife. You'll be the wrong tool. Because someone needs to be sharpened. And you need to be that sharpening tool. Don't become the tool that you're not called to be. Become what he wants you to be. This moment, she became the tool that gave this man something to eat. And in doing that, giving her last, he, God provided her with all that she needed. The big picture. Let's stand. I always want to be ready. I always want to be ready for whatever comes my way. And I've gotten to know my brother Randy, a few of you guys, that you always are wanting to be ready. For when someone comes your way and needs that morsel, needs that word from God, needs that inspiration, needs that guidance, needs that strength, needs that prayer, you guys be ready. Be ready to be usable. Be ready to be all that God has for you. I love Billy Graham. I was, when I was eight years old, watching a TV program. Billy Graham invited me to come. I was, I was upset. Some of you know the story. I was upset and I was crying didn't understand the situation I was in. And at the end of it, he said, do you want Jesus to come in your heart? And I was like, yes, I do. And right when Billy Graham died, one of his famous things that he wanted to always be, he said that I always want to be fat, faithful, available, and teachable. I always want to be fat. Faithful, available, and teachable. Be faithful, be available, and this morning be teachable to hear what God has for you. There's so much that he wants from all of us, guys. There's so, so much that he wants from us. If you have a situation this morning you're struggling with, dealing with, I want you to come up front. Whatever it is, whatever the situation is, whatever the struggle is, whatever the battle is, can you come up front? Just stand right up here. We don't know what everyone's going through. We don't know the battles. We don't know the struggles. Come up here, guys, right in the middle. We don't know the struggles or the battles that everyone's going through. We just don't. God knows. He understands. I know some of you personally and some of you I don't. But he knows. Some of you are going to stand in on behalf of yourself and some of you are going to stand on behalf of others. That's what we should do. But I want you to know this morning, God knows your situation. He knows what you're going through and he cares about that situation. He cares about you. He cares about your life. He cares about your needs. He cares about your heart, your desires. 
the things that you lack. He cares about those things. And he wants to give you the answers to your prayers. But he's, he wants that relationship with you. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And all these things will be added. All these things. you mourn, he will be there. When your son is having trouble, he will be there. When your children are struggling, he will be there. Mike, when you've lost a daughter, he will be there. free from cancer. He will be there. When you struggle with your inner self, who you are, and who he created you to be, Sherry, he will be there. He loves you so much. You, sir, the battle that you're going through right now, he will be there. You give it to him. You give it to him. Carly, and you give it to him. He will be there. Listen, this is the God that we serve. We're a speck in the Milky Way, we're a speck in the universe, and then we're a speck on that speck. And he loves us. So my prayer team come up, these guys. Steve Brown, can you come up and pray? You all right? You not feeling well? My friend David, can you come up and pray? We're just going to do an open prayer, guys. Listen. God knows you. He knows your heart. Father, we thank you right now. Everyone agree in prayer. Father, we thank you right now. God, for who you are, who we are in you, Lord. Father, you know the battles, the struggles right now, Lord, and we thank you right now that your word, we just spoke your word over all these things. Father, we just speak your word over all these things. You know everything that's going on right now. Every trial, every tribulation, every struggle, every battle, you know everything that's going on right now, God, and we give it to you right now. Relationships that have failed, we give it to you right now, Jesus. And we glorify you and we magnify you. And God, we put in those places, those void places, we put peace and joy and strength and love. And the fruit of the Spirit in all those places. God, that you would be victorious in this and that your light would shine through men. That your light would shine. When we're at our darkest moment, that your light would shine. Father, I thank you for peace right now. I thank you for all of heaven being downloaded right now into your lives. Thank you, God, that we're bringing heaven down right now, and he's inserting it in your lives. Whatever you're standing in for, God's, God's dealing with it right now. He said he would. He said he would. You be faithful. You do your part. He's going to do his part. You say yes to him and watch him say yes to you back. So we thank you, Lord, for everyone that come up. If there's anyone in the house that don't know Jesus this morning, just ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to come in your heart and believe, believe, believe that he is who he says he is. And watch the fruit afterwards. 
become a child of God today. I'm just so grateful for all of you. Father, we just thank you. We glorify you. We seal all of this with all of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need further prayer, our prayer team will be up here. So you got